In my kids' years, we were starving because my daddy ate up all the food. My dad. What? That's the craziest thing I've ever heard on this show. Nobody's ever got to 600 by saying someone was eating all the food in the house. That just doesn't seem to make sense. It was a thousand pounds. Hey, what's up, guys? We're back with more 600 pound life. And Margaret Johnson, 35 years old, weight 750. This lady's just about clipping half a ton at this point, so... She's definitely in for the fight of her life. That's a lot to overcome. It's going to be a struggle, but it's a struggle for anyone on the show. You're kind of fighting for your life, and uh, you have to take it pretty seriously. So hopefully this lady can do pretty good, and uh, I'm rooting for her, but I haven't seen it yet. So let's see what Margaret's got going on. We start in the hospital? A couple of hours ago, Margaret and her mom showed up here at the hospital. Margaret apparently fell yesterday and she went to emergency room. She was transferred to here because they didn't have any facility that will take care of somebody that is 750 pounds. I, I mean, I never had a fear of falling, but a lot of people mentioned that to me, like that's their biggest fear. Because you hit the deck, you kind of belong to the deck. Like, it's pretty hard to get up. So uh, we stay away from the floor. We uh, try to keep our feet firmly planted when we bother to stand up. She is 35 years old. And she managed to become 750 pounds. She's only 5 foot 4 inches tall. Her BMI is 129, which is one of the highest BMI I have ever seen. And that is... Damn. My, all right. 605, mine was 73.8 to start. So just the difference there. But I, I'm also a foot taller than her. Very dangerous BMI. That combined with the fact she is not mobile has created a very dire situation for her. And she can barely stand up from her bed to bedside commode. What are we staring at? What's going on over there? Does she see ghost or something? Is this like six cents or something? Six hundredth pound cents? I don't know. She sees something over there in the corner. I want to know what it is. When she fell, she was short of breath. And she and her mom were worried she was having a heart attack. So we're going to run some tests on her to make sure she doesn't have any life threatening issues we need to address right now. But regardless, it's clear if Margaret doesn't do something to turn her life around, it's only going to be a matter of time before her body gives out. But at this point, I'm still not sure she has any intention to get the help she needs to do that. Every time I see Dr. Now strolling towards a room, I'm thinking in his head, he's like, oh no, here we go again. Somebody's about to lie to me about their diet, lie to me about their life at home. But uh, I kind of think he's just used to being lied to at this point. Hello. Hello. Hey, Margaret. I'm Dr. Nazarda. How are you? Doing pretty good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You weigh 750? Mm-hmm. So how long have you been at that weight? I don't know. I haven't weighed myself in three or four years. Do you get up and walk? The last time I was able to really walk was six months ago. Who take care of you at home? My mom. All right, so off the bat, she's in a worse situation than a lot of people. Sometimes we see people that are totally bedbound. That's got to be everyone's biggest fear when it comes to this because once you reach that point, it becomes like the weight probably just piles on that much quicker, and it's definitely an uphill battle anyway. But if you add that you have absolutely no mobility, that's going to be a tough one. Uh, so your mom has any weight problem? She had the gastric bypass. So she had gastric bypass. Uh, why is she providing you too much food and keep you at this weight? Because it's easier not to fight me. And just Doctor now is like, if this hussy's been through it before, why is she letting you go down the same path? But I guess people just fear the like 
anger that's going to come from this lady. Maybe she'll stop, scream, something like that. Personally, I don't really get that because you just walk away and she can't exactly chase you down. Like, she's not going to track hawk you down if you don't give her a damn Twinkie, right? Just pacify me. So, if she doesn't bring it to you, what happened? I get mad at her and I tell her that she doesn't love me. Okay. And so, what do you think is going to happen to you if you continue that? I'm going to die. Your mom's going to love you to death. What's going to happen? Love does not equal lasagna. Stouffer's does not pull on your heartstrings. I don't know why people think that. And they just have this, like, messed up relationship with food. But we see it over and over and over. I don't want to die. I want to change. So why haven't you done anything to change your situation up to this point? I've had a life. What do you mean, by your parents or your family or who? My family, especially my dad. All right, well, that makes a little more sense. Typically, we get some kind of sad backstory in these. I feel bad for them, but at some point, like, you got to start thinking, like, man, I can't keep going on this way. I can't keep living like this. And uh, you got to kind of want to fight back, right? I see so you ate to deal with that? Yes. Food's my comfort. I can hide underneath it. And nobody knows what's going on in my life. So how motivated you are you to change your life and do your part and be able to lose some weight? I'm willing to do whatever I have to to have my surgery. 750 pounds though that's a hell of a lot of food i'd like to see like that tortilla wrap or something that she's able to hide under but i don't know maybe she gets the invisibility cloak from hefty harry or something but uh yeah we're definitely in uh for a bit of a tough one with this lady i can see that already all right okay let's check a couple things and see how things are I think we're gonna have a work cut out for us with Margaret. She says she wants to change her situation, but so far she hasn't done anything to... What's that blue thing for back there? Is that like if you wanna play like 700 pound shuffleboard or something? I don't know, I'd like to see some of these like hospital instruments and know what they're for. So somebody let me know if that's for shuffleboard or uh, if that's for scrubbing your gooch. What could that thing be for? change your life. Can you move your foot up and down? Margaret said that she asked for the food, but I think the mother is enabler. Amazingly that her mother had weight loss surgery herself is continuing to help her to eat as much as she wants and get her weight up to 750 pounds. So this lady's covered in bruises too. Do you think, uh, is that like from being diabetic or I don't know, what could that be from? This is a very pathological situation and I don't see any motivation. I don't see any goal for Margaret, but I'm ready to give her all the tools she needs to change her life and try to lose some weight. Margaret, your BMI is 129. 129 is very high BMI, okay? If my BMI got up to something like that, I feel like I would be playing the pick three with those numbers all the time because you're lucky to be alive. So you probably could win the damn lottery with a BMI like that. And those numbers, I'd be playing the shit out of those numbers. So this is very dangerous situation you're in. So you have to change your life and you have to try harder, okay? While you're here, we can control your eating habit. But when you go home, you got to be on your own. And this is going to be the test for you. If you go home and you're not able to change your eating habits, there's nothing we can do for you, okay? But if her mom or her equate, like, love to feeding, I think she's going to have a pretty rough time when she gets home. I don't know if they can break that kind of cycle. But if her mom's had the surgery, she knows what it takes. So she should be able to help her succeed in this. So I'm going to give you some instruction I want you to read. It will break down what you can eat and cannot eat to do the diet and what healthy eating is. So you need to follow it to where you have some meaningful changes on your eating habit that's going to show on your scale. Okay? All right. 
Right now, we will get her going in the right direction here in a controlled environment. But any progress we make with her is going to be short-lived if she doesn't take responsibility for her life. So, I'm going to bet in that hospital, they can probably get her to lose like 100 pounds in a damn month. If she's sticking to the diet and nobody's sneaking stuff in in their prison pocket or anything like that. Because Mommy Dearest uh, has a thing for feeding her daughter. And uh, that's not a good uh, thing to be going on in this, uh, in this case here. What I want you to do is uh, every day you read this. Three factors that control your weight, your frequency, amount, and type of food. But she doesn't have any time for playing games because if she doesn't change her situation soon, then her time is going to run out. This is going to be something that you're going to have to work hard on, it, okay? Okay. You think you can make all those changes? Yes. You think your mother is going to be on board with this change? Yes. So She's on board. Okay. What's she crying for already? We haven't even got going yet. I want to see the tears come when the diet comes, but... Maybe this is going to be an emotional one, man. I don't know if I'm ready for the emotional roller coaster today. I'm not really feeling it. Okay. Uh, any questions? Just please help me. Well, we're going to give you all the tools you need, one step at a time. But you're going to have to do the hard work. Okay? I totally understand. Okay. Stick with healthy eating habit and uh, try harder. And if you need anything, give me a call. I will do. Thank you. I'm already seeing some type of lack of confidence in herself. If you think that somebody can do it all for you and, like, please help me, yeah, the doctors are obviously going to help. The sur surgery obviously helps. But at some point, you got to be your own hero. It's not going to go well if she's not, like, pulling or trying on her own and she's just, like, counting on everyone else doing stuff for her. I'm here in the hospital. I've been here for about two weeks, and that was not part of the plan when I left the house. But Dr. Now said I might be able to go home today, so I'm excited about that. Oh, this ain't gonna go good. She's already excited. I think I know why she's excited to get home. I gotta meet this mom. Hopefully she's coming into the picture pretty soon. I'm ready to get on doing his program and show him I can do it. I need his help because things are bad, and they're just getting worse. Hey, you ready? Yes. Ready to go home and see the baby? Yes. Babies? This lady's got babies? Oh my God, somebody was going to Pound Town, and not 750 Pound Town, some other kind of Pound Town. I'm, ready to go home. I'm just glad to see you. Hello, hang on. Get her, doctor, now. I, I love when he jumps on somebody's ass, man, because they deserve it. We all deserve it, and sometimes people need to hear that. But I imagine you got to be pretty careful how you talk to people. You kind of got to feel them out, see what's going to motivate them one way or another. Doing? Hi, doctor. Hey, Margaret, how you doing? Doing pretty good. So how's your mom doing? You finally get to meet me in person. All right, you doing okay? Yeah, working 42 hours a week doesn't cut it. I don't get to meet very many people. Well, you know. Isn't that like a normal work schedule, 42 hours a week? That don't seem like anything out of the norm. I think that's kind of everybody's thing, right? Margaret is in very poor shape. She came in the 750 pounds. And we that's kept the her on a diet. In a few days, she lost 30 pounds. So that is what we need to continue at home. We are. But I'm going to give you a goal of at least 30 pounds each month. But we want to Doctor now is taking it. She lost 30 pounds in two weeks. Now she's got to do that in a month? Uh, he's already. Part of him has to be accounting for like screw ups and like learning trial by error because we definitely tend to mess up a little bit at the start for sure. Stay in the office and get your weight. I expected that you lose 100 pounds in three months. In All three right? months? Okay. Yeah. If you continue to lose weight, then we can work with you and get you to the point that you're going to be able to hopefully have weight loss surgery. Margaret, how bad do you want this surgery? Bad. How bad do you want this surgery? Bad, Mama. 
and we're gonna work. Here's the Dorito drill sergeant coming in. How bad do you want it? Yes, ma'am. I want more. Like, second servings or something, but maybe maybe the mom knows that this is kind of what works for her. I guess I'm giving her the benefit of a doubt at this point, but she has fed her to this point, so I don't think she really knows what works for her. Work at every point to get it, are yes. we not? We will order physical therapy and home health to come and see her, get her stamina up so she can get up and walk and perhaps come to the office. And home health is going to help with the personal hygiene. And we already got the dietitian come to talk to her. She has written the stuff that she needs to read every day and follow the diet. If she's not able to follow the diet, we're not going to be able to do anything for her. She'd have to be taking hooker baths because how's home hygiene going to do anything different? Is the mom not helping her scrub? Cause she definitely can't scrub everywhere. There's no way she could reach her backside or she can't even walk. So her hygiene is probably not the best, but nobody on the show probably has the greatest hygiene. To follow this diet. No sugary drink and a lot of exercise, okay? And you need to have a positive influence on her. I had the gastric bypass seven years ago. All right, so you should know better, right? Oh, you I know her. all about that. No, it makes me have the heart palpitations, the dumping syndrome. It makes me just feel plum miserable. No. Look, lady, we don't need to know about your Hershey squirts, which is what dumping syndrome is. Certain foods will run straight through you. And the heart palpitations. I didn't know that was a thing. I don't think my heart's ever raced for any kind of, like, Snickers or anything. But I guess that's a side effect. I never really had that. I know my limits. Okay. So we got a lot of work to do. And now that you know, in one week we can lose 30 pounds in the hospital. And you should be able to do that at home too. Is that not awesome? Yes, it is. We'll send her home today. Why does this lady look pissed off all the time? She looks like she's about to bite a leg off or something. Look at that scowl on her face, man. And it was 30 pounds in one week. I thought it was two. In, in a year and a half. We're going to get her under 200. So this is going to be the goal, okay? I want her to be looking like her mama. All right. Y'all look. She didn't look too happy. She's like, I'm going to look like you? Oh, shit, man. That sucks. <laughs> looking good and take care, okay? We'll see you later. Because you got some pretty eyes and you are a beautiful child. We have Margaret in the hospital for a couple of weeks now. Most of the tests we ran on her when she arrived didn't show any immediate issues with her. Ex so she's one of the lucky ones. But I like to hear her mom say some positive things about her. Too many people get down on themselves. They can't really kind of like pep talk themselves out of the situation because it's just a very depressing place to be. Except an infection in her leg that cleared up after uh -oh. we treated it. While she's been here, we had her on a controlled diet. And in two weeks, we have been able to get her weight down 67 pounds from when she arrived. She was 752, now she's at 685. So we have made some progress on that front with her. And we have also been providing her physical therapy to help her get up and walk. She pushed back some, but overall she's doing well. And we so that's what the mom says she's dealing with whenever she's like, well, she'll bitch me out if I don't bring her food. They're dealing with the pushback, I guess. She's not very good at uh, helping herself, which she's going to have to learn and hopefully get a hang of throughout this episode. We have her moving in the right direction now. So the next step is for her to show me she can do this on her own if she wants to continue. Hopefully Margaret and her mom Millie are as serious as they are telling me because they both need to make a lot of changes if Margaret is going to have any chance of success in the long term. Her mom's going to be kind of the guiding light, I guess, for her. If she's had the surgery, she knows what it takes. She can either be like a huge positive or a huge negative. I can't wait to see what happens when they get home, really, here. I know it's rough, but guess what? This is that miracle we pray for, isn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we finally got it. Give me a high five. It's going to be a rocky road, and I ain't talking about the ice cream, but there's some ups and downs here. 
that uh, you kind of just got to learn to kind of like enjoy the journey because if you don't, if you don't sit back and kind of enjoy the view when you're seeing yourself go down or just kind of find small victories and things, you'll get down on yourself. People tend to get down on themselves so much. That's kind of one of the things that drives me nuts because you should think very highly of yourself. It will help you with your weight loss. Oh, I need to put some powder right here. You're rashed. It's been a week since I've come home from the hospital. And since then, I've been trying to eat like Dr. Now says. And to do the exercises. Wow, thick thighs save lives, but those? She's like so... It always blows me away to see the proportions of people on the show and how they're different from person to person. But she's definitely a uh, bottom heavy here. He wants. But ever since then, I've been really scared of falling like I did before. Because my legs have such a hard time supporting all my weight. Look. Whoever makes that little stepping stool should use this as advertisement. Because that's plastic, okay? That plastic is holding up 750 to get her up in that bed. Look, look, isn't that something? Yes, yes. And I don't want to let her down. So I'm doing what... Oh my god, a bed of chihuahuas. They bought her a muzzle. Look at that. They're going to get her to stop eating with a muzzle. That's the only reason I can figure that they put it right there, right? Doctor now told us to do. Because I know I need to get this surgery. So I can live a life more than this. I mean, grab your arm. Ready? You ready? One, two, three. Oh, one more time. Now. All right, you want a salad? Mm-hmm. That's the most depressing noise. Uh-huh, I'll take a damn salad, I guess. Salads aren't going to be as good as uh, all the stuff she's used to eating. No pancakes, powdered sugar, and all that. But she'll get the hang of it eventually. But food has always been there for me. And if you take that away from me, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to get by. I'm pretty sure she'll just rage out on you, right? She's going to whip that salad dressing at her mom's head or something. I've been eating wrong my whole life. Not just Me the too. wrong foods, but for the wrong reasons, too. In my kids' years, we were starving because my daddy ate up all the food. My dad... What? That's the craziest thing I've ever heard on this show. Nobody's ever got to 600 by saying someone was eating all the food in the house. That just doesn't seem to make sense. It was a thousand pounds. I have two older sisters, Becky and Tiffany. And between... Holy shit. A half ton dad? No wonder there was no damn food in the house. That probably got... Could you imagine the grocery bill in this household? And the mom had a gastric? Oh my god. They were going broke. That's all we got to do is eat his leftovers. If we ever complained, Mama would shush us so we wouldn't upset him. Because my dad was a terrifying man. I don't think... I mean, I guess kid brain, right? You're going to be terrified of your father if he's kind of aggressive. But I don't think I'd be scared of the thousand pound man. Because I'm pretty confident in my ability to get away from that guy. You know what I'm saying? My dad was very controlling. And if he said... You'd be right here. She had to be right there. That's how he was. You want to hide your feelings away from him. Because if you argued with him, then he would call us names and just be very mean. This guy sounds like a big bag of suck, doesn't he? A thousand pounds, won't let his kids eat. I think most of you parents out there would go hungry before you would ever let your kids go hungry. So I learned to sneak into the kitchen, and I ate his food to get back at him. When I ate my dad's food, it was for revenge, so he wouldn't have it. Oh my god, the revenge diet, it tastes so sweet, right? She's like uh, the James Bond of junk food, just tiptoe, the tiptoe Twinkie taker. But uh, yeah, I imagine her dad be pretty pissed off if his leftovers were gone. He's a thousand pounds, he's probably keeping track of all that in his head throughout the day. For herself. She'd get up in the middle of the night. If we had something left over in the icebox, she'd go in there and she would make it look like she didn't eat it, but she did eat it. 
That's how I got to 120 pounds by the time I was six. That's what How the hell did she make it look like she didn't eat it? Is this lady pulling some kind of black magic here? How would that work? Is she just spreading it out better and taking scoops here and there? When I was diagnosed with early signs of diabetes and an eating mm. My mom, she started preparing me my own special meals, just like she did for my dad, except mine was healthier. And it worked. I started to lose weight. And I was happier because I was getting the attention and love. Damn, would you look at the size of that salad? I don't think Dr. Now is going to sign off on that. Not for a second. That's way too much. Her, that's got to be at least a thousand calorie salad, right? I was craving, but my dad did not like not having all the attention on him. My dad would make my mom leave us and go with him. He demanded that I had to be at the hospital with him every time he went. I so tell him to kick rocks. What's he going to do? Call you? Block the number. This is this is just the most dysfunctional family I think I've seen on the show. They might even be up there with like the Asante level of dysfunction, honestly. I had to go with him to the doctors. He had to go to Dallas. And for two months, I had to be completely away from my kids and live in Dallas while they stayed back in Arkansas. That sounds like a personal choice, lady. That definitely didn't have to be your reality. I understand if somebody's highly manipulative, though, you'll kind of just go along with it instead of fight. But I think most women would tell this guy to kick rocks if he said, leave your kids alone for two months. So that sounds like a choice to me. My mom sent us down the road to live with our grandmother on my dad's side. She was the reason my dad is as messed up as he was. I call her evil grandma. Or the wicked witch. She's. I call mine grumpy grandma, but that's just because she's always. She'll cuss somebody out real quick. That lady is a firecracker, man. The reason why my dad has so much hate in his heart. I remember one of the ways that she would. Was with food. She made me eat 10 eggs in a row because I said I was hungry. But my. What? I've never heard something like that. Like an eating challenge because she's mad at you? She'll make you eat more? What a weirdo, man. This grandma sounds messed up. My mama must have figured it out how my grandmother was. Because she sent us to go stay with my Aunt Carla. Oh, Aunt Carla, I really loved her. I really, really loved her. When we got to go to my Aunt Carla's, it was the first time in my life where I could eat without being attacked or ridiculed. The time we... At least she had one kind of good role model in her life. The dad seems to suck, and the mom seems like she's kind of just going along with whatever the dad says, which is kind of a scary thought, considering he's a thousand-pound man and was very demanding. Spent there were the happiest times of my life. We got to be real close. And then around when I started high school, I lost my Aunt Carla. She was like a second mama to me. A guardian angel. My hero. She died very courageously from a blood clot that broke off from my heart and went to her lungs. Losing my wow, so the one good role model that this lady had, she lost tragically. So that probably messed her up even more, man. This is, this is all, this might be the worst episode yet. My Aunt Carla took a piece of my heart. I was crushed. So again, I resorted to food because food was the only thing I had to make pain go away. And by the time I was 15, I was pushing 300 pounds. Everybody was cruel to Margaret about one thing or the other. By the time she was 16, she was so depressed that she just wanted to die. It was all due. Kids are brutal. They're always going to say the meanest, nastiest thing. So I think if you can get through those years and stuff like that, I mean, personally, it never really happened to me. Middle school was a little rough because you're just so unsure of yourself. But high school, I didn't have any kind of issues. It sounds like this lady was kind of getting it from every single angle, except from her aunt, and then she lost her. To her needing to feed what was wrong in here. When she looked in the mirror, apparently she didn't love her. She was, even though I loved her. I don't know why she felt like she wasn't important. I didn't know how to help. Because you're her mother, you left her to go stay with the dad. You shipped her off. The dad's telling her that she ain't worth nothing, never going to be nothing. So her self-esteem is just crushed right there. 
Personally, I believe if you don't teach your kids some level, of, and some moms email me and ask me, like, where does your confidence come from? My mom's told me I was the greatest thing since sliced bread, since I was five. So I've never had an issue in that department because it was taught to me very young just to be confident in myself. Help her. I finished my senior year without friends, and I just kept eating. So after I left high school, I was about 400 pounds. I tried looking for a job, but nobody wanted me. By the time I was 20, I was pushing 500 pounds. It was hard for me to try. They'll look at you as a liability if you're uh, like applying for jobs, because think about it. They got to pay your uh, bills or something. You go out on workers' comp, something happens, you get hurt. Like, you're a liability at that weight. I ever do things for myself, I went on disability. My dad became more abusive. After that, my mom reached a point of no return. So she packed her stuff and left with my older sister, Tiffany, to take shelter with a friend. I woke up the next morning, and my sister and my mama were gone. So my dad... You abandoned her with this asshat? A second time? Oh, this mom sucks the big one. I don't like her one bit. So far, I like Margaret. I'm not a big fan of the mom or the dad or the grandma. Everyone sucks but Margaret right now. I told me she had abandoned me because I was a fat pig and useless, and she couldn't take care of me no more. Losing her was the most upsetting part of my life. What? I didn't care if I lived or died, so I would eat to escape. I was so terribly lonely. She would just sit there and urinate on herself, and that's pretty much where she stayed. I mean, she Oh, jeez. You think, uh, we could have kept that a secret, but we got a mob of chihuahuas around here just begging for a piece. I don't know if they're going to get it, but, uh, she, you're not worth it. There's people in your life that are going to tell you stuff like that. I had people tell me, like, hey, why won't you just die already? You're kind of a waste of life. So, I mean, it'll happen. Typically, it's a little disheartening, but me, I don't know. It kind of rolled off, like, just kind of rolled off. Uh, it didn't really bother me. She was always a lonely child to begin with, and now she was being alienated and thinking, Mama don't love me. She's abandoned me. Let's self-destruct. I found out that... My dad told lies to my mom about me. He was telling her I hated her and that I was furious that she left without me and that I was glad. I think you'd kind of be justified to be a little pissed off about that, but this whole manipulation and this whole, hey, he said this, she said that, I don't like that, man. Just talk to each other. You'll figure it out. As she was gone, hearing all this for the first time put me in a state of shock. I never wanted to see my dad again. I begged my mom to take me back. Mama said, maybe you can live with me. I never said you couldn't. I never told you I didn't want you. I just didn't want your daddy no more. Yeah, but you up and left. Left her there knowing that this guy is a total sack of shit. So how does that work in your brain? Because you took the other girls. Like, that's what it said, right? You just left her to deal with her father, who's a thousand pound man who's highly just a nasty, terrible human being. I was so relieved. I kept eating like I always did. And before I knew it, I was 750 pounds dependent on my mama. My cellulitis infection had gone into my bloodstream. The infection kept getting worse, and that took me down more. And before I knew it, I had become dependent on my mama. But this feels like... Something about this mom is just giving me a weird vibes. If your husband's a thousand pounds, then your daughter ends up being 750. You're the primary caretaker. Something's off here. Uh, I'm not like wit like any kind of witch hunt, ghost hunt, anything like that. But uh, Casper, the calorie fiend in the kitchen right now, I ain't really trusting her one damn bit. A stroke of luck to be working with Dr. Now. I know he helps a lot of people like me. And I have my daddy's voice in my head telling me, I'm a no good failure, and that just makes me want to give up. My biggest fear of what if he's right? So I know I have to do this. I You're gonna have to replace that voice with like Eye of the Tiger or something, because if she don't believe in herself, she can't be successful. That's kind of the root of this. You're gonna have to believe in yourself. You're gonna have to cheer for yourself, or else no one else will. Doctor, now he needs you to get up because there's a blood clot, and it. 
take your thing out. You already have a history of DDP. Yeah, I know, but they keep pushing on you and they keep pushing on me. I'm sick of it. <laughs> Damn, this mom's just a regular ball of joy in here. You see how she is behind the scenes when she thinks that the mics can't pick her up? I imagine that's probably her real personality. The mom, the dad, I think everybody just failed this poor girl, honestly. Give me the dad. I, I told you I'd reskate. Oh, just leave me alone, mom. No, I'm not. I'm assuming that was her mom. It's all about what you want. Okay, fine, I quit. You want that? You can't quit because I fire you, lady, because you are not the best uh, weight loss consultant I've seen on the show yet. Okay, I don't know how quickly we'll be able to get scheduled next week because we really moved things around to see her. There's not any way she'll do any PT today to make sure that she can get scheduled for surgery. She's going to have to stop self-destructing at some point, so at least she's letting them in. Hello. Hi, Miss Margaret. I'm Mallory, so I'm the physical therapist. I think they just wanted us to kind of do a general assessment and see kind of where you're at. Um, normally, are you able to, like right now, you're not, I'm not going to make you sit up, but if you needed to sit up, are you able to sit yes. up? You're able to sit up all by yourself? Yeah. Oh, yeah, this lady's doing cartwheels around the house when nobody's looking. But here's the pound pack right here, all these little dogs that are all up in the bed, I imagine, because dogs like to roll in dead things, and it probably don't smell that damn good. Not, no help, no nothing? No help. Okay, what about, like, getting up from sitting to stand? Too. Okay. I can so, by myself. Okay, you can do all that part yes. by yourself, no issues. It's just I'm having problems walking. And so, is it like balance problems walking yes. or pain problems? It's pa balance and pain. And pain. Okay, where is the pain when you're walking? My knees. In your knees. Okay. Is it the whole knee or like? Oh, yes, the whole knee. Everywhere. Uh, they, I have no cartilage, gentlemen. Okay, no cartilage. I could have told you that. 750 pounds. There's going to be a hell of a lot of pushing on that right there. Just That's going to hurt a lot. So knee. they hurt. Okay. Um, How far are you normally able to walk? Ooh, a dinner and a show. I'm trying to figure out where the knee is. Uh, yeah, I don't see it. I'm not sure where the knee is, but hopefully they show us. Walk before you have to sit. From here to the computer table. Okay. Can you lift this foot up toward you? Okay, hold it right there, okay? Don't let me push. Does that hurt? Nope. No? Okay, can you push down into my hand? Good. What about this side? Can you bring it up? Hold it up. Don't let me push. Mm -hmm. Oh, that one hurt? Or is it hard to do? It's hard to do it because it's making that knee hurt. Oh, it's making your knee hurt when you try and hold it up? Okay, can you push down? Does that make... <laughs> that makes your knee hurt too? She's lucky she doesn't have, a, like, a lot of the health issues that people have when they get this big. But this is definitely an uphill battle if I've ever seen one on the show because she's not in a good way. She makes it from there to the computer chair. That's going to be a lot, but she can overcome it. Yeah, here. Can you pull like you're trying to pull me? Okay. What about push? Can you push? Okay. Okay. Can you hold your arm right here? Don't let me push it down. Hold it right there. Any pain? No. Can you lift it up above? Yeah, you can. Okay. All right. Do you have any weakness in your arms, like in your hands or anything? No. We made you kind of a goodie bag, so you have some stuff that you can do. I've got the purple one. Yeah, so this, this is blue. I don't okay. know what. They're just different brands, have different colors. I've never heard of giving someone that's 750 pounds a goodie bag, but I got an idea of what would typically be in there. But every time you go to your nutritionist at the bariatric surgeon, they'll give you like a bunch of protein shake samples and stuff like that. So they do actually give you goodie bags. Where is this? Safe. Oh, yeah. But watch. I can. Does Ooh. that hurt? No. Okay. When you're standing, do you have to hold on to something? Yes. Yes. Okay. If you don't hold on to something. I'm wobbling. I just have to have something to hold on to because I'm not stable on the feet. Okay. Okay. Do you have pain? That is a interesting place for a surge protector. Just kind of hanging from the ceiling. Wobbly. She needs a walker, but I kind of would expect her to need a walker. Pain in your feet? No. No? Only in your knees? No I'm hip pain? Knees. No, no hip back pain? Mm -hmm. Nothing? Okay. We gave you a stress ball. <laughs> Girl, squeeze away. 
Oh my god, I thought she stuck that ball somewhere that I was not. It looked like she was sticking it down there, right? Like a Kegel ball or something? He was in bed. That's okay. I can give you one of these in each hand. I feel better after meeting the physical trainers. Damn, that dog was going to town on his crotch. Did you see that? They're nice people, and they got my best interest at heart. So they can come back on the right day, and we can work together some more. That will be good when we do that. In the meantime, I'll do more on my own and with my mama. All right. It was good working with you, and we... I get the feeling that she's going to have a lot of bad days because good days are few and far between. But hopefully she can learn to get out of her own way and actually try to accept the help. Margaret, we have got to get up. Come on. I'm coming, Mama. No, I don't have a lot of time, Margaret. Did she get bigger, though? Because she seems like she's pretty grumpy. Somebody might be a little hangry in this house. Come on. Damn. Damn, that white dog back there is fearless, isn't he? And so is the black one. She started the tip backwards. Those little dogs have been through some stuff, man. Look at that. That one's seen some shit right there with the white man. He got he's probably got some war stories to tell us. Push, 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 push. <laughs> It'll be worth it. Is this not what we've wanted for seven years? What the hell? Where'd that thing in the back fall from? Was it sticking to her butt? Go, Margaret. I know it's right. Yeah, you don't know nothing. Damn, with a backside like that, you don't even need pockets. You could bounce stuff right on that and go wherever you want to go. I got you. Wow, talk about rough starts, though. She's starting pretty damn near, like, one of the worst ones on the show. She can get up, but if that's as far as she can make it and it takes that much effort, she's going to... Man, I feel so bad for her. I'm done. I just want you to walk one more time and then back. I'm done. We just started. This shit's got a long way to go, sister. You can't be nowhere near done yet. This is where you get me right now. Huh? Get over this. I feel sorry for Margaret. Mom, shut no, the hell I'm up. not. It is very important that he sees your movie. I've let you get away with this way too long. Now it's time to get up. Now come on. Thanks for the pep talk, Mom. You know exactly what to say to make me feel better. She... Obviously, she does not respond well to that type of uh, motivation. At least it doesn't seem that way to me. Everybody's going to be a little different, right? Different things drive different people. Why are you pissing me? Because I am. I'm going to run and go get my clothes on. Damn, Lieutenant Lunchable here seems like she's a little bit of a firecracker or damn self, but I don't really like her. Not a damn bit. This is your last shot. So come on. <sighs> Every step. Yes, it will. Every step. Oh. Oh. 
Everything in this house is built pretty tough if it's there to maintain like 750 pounds. But then again, when you buy furniture, you kind of got to factor that in when you're this big. I mean, it's a bed, but her whole little trust fall thing that she keeps doing when she gets back in the bed, that could be dangerous if uh, her shelf slides out from under her or something. One, two. <clears throat> oh, oh. What? Now, because this leg is so edema, scoot over some more bed. I just swallowed and it hurt. I'm getting sick. That's that shot. Ugh. Oh. Wow, this might be one of the more depressing episodes we've seen so far. But at least she's doing something right here. I can't really fault her for that. Hopefully it gets a lot better from here. Hey, Margaret. Hi. How are you today? In pain. So is that why you're not making it in to see me today? Because last I talked to you, you said you're going to be able to come to your office and apparently that's not happening. So give me some idea what's going on with you. Mom? Oh, God. So not going well off the bat. I could have told you from the size of that salad that this was probably not going to end very well. But if she won't even go in there when she's already, like, so close by, uh, we're up Shit's Creek here without a paddle. I had to work today, and so I had no way of coming. I'm in pain, but I'm willing to deal with that to see you. Your mom had to work today? Yeah, I didn't have a ride. Come on, Margaret. We had this scheduled for a while now. And you could have called me to let me know that before today. So I don't believe that's the reason. It's still... Doctor now is prepared. He probably has some kind of tubby taxi service or so. He could get you in there, right? It would just have to be like a medical transport, something like that. No reason, Doctor now. My leg hurts, but that wouldn't stop me. I just need my mom to drive me, and she can't. Well, physical therapy says you haven't been cooperating with them most days. No, that's not it. They haven't been coming consistently for physical therapy. They have, but you turn them away a lot of times. But we got to make sure that we have physical therapy come to you. No matter what. But right now, I want to see your progress. So you need to come see me today. I don't have a... She didn't seem very receptive to the people that were kind of coming to help her. It seems like anyone trying to help her is kind of just a hindrance to her. She really don't even want to deal with it. It's like she just wants to lose the weight and not have to deal with all the effort that it takes to get there. Right. Margaret, you can use Metrolift. I've not heard nothing about Metrolift. You have to call Metrolift, and instead of time, they come and pick you up. I'll get ready to give you the information about that so you can set it up, and you can get in wheelchair, right? Doctor now is like, I don't care if you got to take the morbidly obese magic carpet. Just get your happy ass in here so we can see where you're at. But if you're that close by, you really don't have an excuse. People across the country, like, I kind of get that one. Yes. Okay, they can pick you up with a wheelchair and bring you to the office, okay? Okay. You don't have to be up walking the whole way. But if you're able to at least walk around the clinic, then that's going to be an issue. But Metrolift can help you. Okay. I need to make sure you're making progress and not gaining your weight back. Are you feeling that you lost any weight? Yes, sir. We are and looking like you have lost some weight, so that's good. But you don't look like you have lost a whole lot in two months. So I'm telling you, Dr. Now can eyeball the pounds. He's seen so many fat people through the years that I'm surprised that he can't just, like, weigh you right there through the video call, honestly. The man's kind of got the eye for it at this point. After the call with Dr. Nail last time, when I missed my appointment with him, my mom called him back and told him I couldn't go because my leg was hurting and it was becoming infected. Then Dr. Nail prescribed me some antibiotics and gave me more time. 
very scared. Wow, so the mom seems like she's just as much in the way as Margaret is. So if she can't help the situation, she's being kind of an obstacle here too. Who the hell's going to make this work? It's only one month later. But he was serious that I had to make it this time. And that I had to be up and walking on my own into the clinic. So I've been working very hard. But I'm still scared though. To find out that I don't qualify for weight loss surgery. Wow, that's a hell of a way to sit. I guess she can't get all of her in the wheelchair, though. So she's kind of teeter-tottering right here on hitting the floor again. At the hospital, I was 685. Dr. Down wanted me to lose at least 60 pounds. And I know I've made good progress. So I'm hoping I'm at the 625 gold that Dr. Down wanted me at. I hope she is, but this is not the most confident I've been in somebody thus far. Uh, I do think she's probably lost a little bit of weight, though, if that she was eating properly, even though she was eating too much. But whatever my weight is, I know I've lost a lot. <sighs> Come right here. Great. One, two, three. Come. Now let go of mom. What's that doctor now? Just peeking in the background like he was like, oh, she's finally here. Here we go. It keeps going wrong. Like don't move, okay? Don't move. Your weight is 632. She's lost 100 pounds. <laughs> wow, that's a lot more than I thought. I didn't think she was doing that good. Way to go. I knew we ate like rabbits, didn't we, Margaret? Oh, my God. It's been worth them rabbit eatings. Oh, my God. <laughs> Powerbunga, give me them high fives. <laughs> oh, man, it's kind of sweet to see her this happy or this proud of herself. She deserves it. She lost a lot of weight. She's trying. She's trying a lot harder than I thought. I didn't think she was doing that good. Well, I'm very happy you made it. And on top of that, you lost weight and you're more mobile. So you're down to 632. So you lost 120 pounds. All right. So that's positive, but uh, we got still a long way to go. So what I want to do next is start a new going to psychotherapy with your mom to help you to work on your dynamic a little bit more. Yeah, this lady's home life, the dynamic there between the whole family, probably something therapy could greatly help, but uh, she's kind of dealt with a lot through her life, man. I'm happy. She lost 120 pounds. I couldn't be happier for her. Then I want you to get to work with PT to get you a little bit more mobile over the next month. And if you do those things, providing that you continue losing like you have been and you stick with the program, and we do some tests and see if you're going to be safe to do weight loss surgery, then we're going to um, approve you for that. But all <laughs> those things. Okay? If I didn't know any better, I'd say she wasn't happy, but the, they're happy tears, okay? But it doesn't seem happy. She's crying a lot for somebody who's doing this good so far. You just made her day. I told her we left all the Debbie Downers and we were going to get this. Not the same girl you met back in the hospital, is it? Uh, maybe a little far to go, but the Debbie Downers leaving the little Debbies. Yeah, she's doing good. She's definitely kicking its butt right now. We got it, baby. We got it. Oh, my God. We've tried this so many times. I would love to give you a kiss. You are my godsend. You're going to be one of her first dance partners after she gets down to where she can stand up and walk. Damn, pucker up, doctor, now. She's about to come lay one on you. And uh, we could do the morbid macarena or something, I guess, since we're do talking about dancing here. Save the last dance, uh, super morbidly obese edition. Oh. You're my godsend. <laughs> well, uh, I'm proud of your progress, and if you keep it up, we can get you to weight loss surgery safely. 
and make sure that everything's going to be all right for you. So keep up the good work. Don't think that you have uh, uh, made it and uh, relax and go back to eating. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Okay. We I want to be. I'm not going back. We want to be down to 200 pounds before next year. That's a good goal, and weight loss surgery will help her do that. So, so, I like it when people say they don't want to go back because I definitely don't want to go back. But the so early on, she's gonna have to give herself like some failures because. People will mess up time and time again. Like it, it's bound to happen where you don't have like the best week, best month, something like that. I kind of just choose to look at it like every single day when you wake up, you're undefeated for that day. So just kind of work on it that way. But hopefully she keeps working in the right direction. But she shouldn't get down on herself if she does have a bad day. Try to work on improving your hygiene if you want your leg to improve. So keep it up. And stick with the program. I'm sticking with it. All right, I'm proud of your progress. Thank you. Give me a call if you need anything. Okay. All right, I'll see you next month. Thank you. Hygiene, if she can't improve that, the infections could take her out before she even gets to the surgery, honestly. It has been two weeks since my last appointment with Dr. Now, and I've been doing really good with my progress. I've been doing all my physical therapy every time they come. I like Brandon. He's good. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Ready for some fun and games? All right, go ahead. Uh, I think that's exactly what she's ready for, considering when the lady PT showed up, she did not seem interested at all, but this guy shows up. She seems to like him, so uh, good on you, Brandon. Sit up. Now, I don't want to wear out the legs with exercise. So, let's Did I just realize how many dessert dream catchers are in this damn house? It seems like they're everywhere. I just can't, I think I counted two or three of them when I just noticed that. Let's walk. Okay, slow, slow and controlled. Oh, there's chocolate stains on the front of her shirt. I don't trust this one bit. You're doing great. Walking with my physical therapist still scares me, but I know he's got me. He's not going to let me fall. Doing great, Margaret. I am very, very, very determined to get back up on my feet and to do for myself. What's the point of that gate back there if the dogs can just tuck right around it? Because they're not skinny chihuahuas. They're not sliding through, like slipping through the gate or anything. These little fat wieners are going right through that damn thing. I know I can do this, and I have a big glimmer of hope. Good job. Very good. Great job. Lean forward and press up. The only thing I haven't had time to figure out is therapy for me and my mom, like Dr. Now wants us to do. The hard part is mama has to find time to take off from work, and that's going to take that's probably the most important part of her journey because all the stuff she mentioned at the start with her family dynamic and stuff like that is probably going to be what holds her back from getting any better or having any semblance of like an adult life. The whole day. So when my mama can figure out the schedule, we will be doing that for sure. But that's the only thing. Other than that, I've been a good girl. So I think that's going to be really good when I get in there to see Dr. Now because there's progress I'm making for sure. And the best of that is I can move a lot better, Heather and Yon, and I can't wait to show him because I want that surgery, and it's time for me to get it. You made it. All right. I think she's going to deserve it. If she can keep up the pace she was on before, I don't see any reason she wouldn't get the surgery. But, man, I'm really pulling for her because I feel terrible about her whole mom leaving her, her dad being such a sack of shit. You did great. We'll keep it up. I'll be back on Friday. All right, ma'am, you take care. I'll be back. Keep Look at the king of the mountain. Oh, that dog is the champion. Which one's a winner? Oh, well, the other ones are a little big. They might not be able to jump up there or something. Oh, don't, 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 don't me out. I'm not going to dump you out. I just got you through the door. All right. 
She's got to keep me sick. Once you get up there, you gotta let go. Of Does she look tinier to you guys, or is this dress just a little misleading or something? I don't know. She should still be doing good. She lost 53. She's lost 120 pounds so far, so. Come on, hurry, get Clayton. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Come on, come on, come on. Your weight is 626. I didn't lose enough. Oh, fuck me, Fupa. This ain't good. We got a $5 foot long from Brandon coming in here, and she couldn't even get it done then. And look, this guy's wearing the back in black, the fat hack t-shirt. I like that. But shit, five pounds? Ah, oh, I want this lady to win more than most of them. Well, we're still doing good. It's fine. I don't know what happened or how that's right. I just hope Dr. Nell can be happy with what I did. I'm going. Oh, my God. She hasn't seen the show, has she? It don't work that way. Five pounds ain't gonna do it, sister. Oh, shit. I want Margaret to win because she's so miserable. Everything in her life sucks. Margaret, how's everything going with you? I'm disappointed. Well, uh, what do you mean you're disappointed? Because I thought I would lose more than what I've lost. Well, uh, if you were doing your part, you would have lost 50 pounds this past one. So it took... Dr. Now's like, what are you disappointed in? It's your damn fault. But while it is her fault, I told you, she's going to have mess up. She's going to screw up. It's not like we understand how to eat properly. She's never ate properly, really. Looks like you backslid. And you're still not fully cooperating with PT. And you refuse to do psychotherapy. So this isn't good because you're still 626 pounds. Your BMI today is 107.5. So you basically, both of you, went back to your old habits. We don't know what we did wrong. She's still eating the same way. Oh, shove it, sister. You're the one that abandoned her all the damn time, and now you're bringing her the food. I don't see, I've seen her walk to the computer chair. I don't think she's tiptoeing past anyone getting the damn snacks. I also don't think the Chihuahua alarm system would allow that to happen. Okay. I mean, yesterday okay, she didn't Hold on right there, okay? Over oh, Just hold on. And, like, you don't know what is going on. There's a simple, simple map. You're eating too much, you're not going to lose weight. Which part of this is very hard to understand, that she's eating at least four times of what she should be eating. It's probably the part where the weight just don't come off on its own. You actually have to do stuff. But damn, look at her. She's heartbroken, man. Shouldn't have touched that damn Hershey's bar. So why are we overeating in a plane like we don't know what's going on? But she didn't overeat. She's still eating. You want to argue that with the scale? Don't argue with me. But she you argue didn't that with the scale. She couldn't overeat. I gave her proportioned meals, and it's this. You're gonna have to call customer service with the scale company then, because maybe we need a calibration. We've seen patients say that before. That scale just can't be right. Them damn air calories be getting to everyone on this show. Same as I've always given her. The only thing that we know that might have been different is she quit eating the vinaigrette and ate honey mustard dressing. Is she eat what the a gallon of honey mustard? <laughs> no. <laughs> this lady's drowning in Dijon at this point. Doctor now knows that he gonna buy that unless she's literally sitting there chugging it. Like that wouldn't have made that big of a difference where she only lost five pounds from 53 the month before. I don't know how much she put on it's her salad. The two cups. But I can tell you that's the only difference. So she's gaining from thin air, right? Well, I don't weight. know how she done it. Two cups of honey mustard's a hell of a lot of honey mustard, isn't it? This is what I know. I'm the one that fixes her meals unless she's getting up when I'm not there. No. I'm not getting up, and I promise you that. I don't know what it went wrong. I don't know. 
Did you quit exercising during no. the day? I don't exactly think that she's going to jump up to go get food all the time because it's kind of an ordeal for her to get back in bed. So something here just smells fishy to me. I don't know. The mom, I don't trust that lady in the slightest, man. I don't, just Maybe she just doesn't have a trusting face. For her to be 600 pounds and keep that 600 pounds, she's eating five to six thousand calories a day. If she eats 1,000 or 1,200 calories, she's going to lose 100 pounds in one month, OK? And they don't come and tell me what you're eating. You want to argue all that with the scale? Be my guess, OK? If she's not losing weight, she's eating too much. You know, she's eating the food that belongs next five years ahead of time. I'm telling you, doomsday preppers. We are all prepping the pounds here. We're just getting ready for the walking dead of Weight Watchers or something. That's really what's going on in this show. You guys have totally misread it, and uh, that's what we're working with. Unless you drink your shake in the morning and you drink a shake at night, and that's only 300 calories a day. Who's Shut up. What is it? A caramel shake? Is it just straight squirt like the squeeze bottle in her mouth of caramel? Because the shake's not going to do that. Said you should be drinking your shake. You're it's the a, enabler that in the house, you're turning in something a, that is not correct. It's a protein shake. Well, only... who said protein shake was okay to drink? Nobody. So between you two, whatever is going on, we're killing her. And if you don't go to therapy and do what you need and take this seriously, my bet is you come in next month, you probably gain some weight. We didn't even do it. I drink a premier protein a day, but it's usually after my like weightlifting or something. But I wouldn't think a protein shake would be the worst thing on a low-carb diet, as long as you get the right kind of protein shake. He gave me the same, the same story that you're not eating very much, and between you two, um, it was maybe honey mustard. Or, you know, I don't want to hear excuses. I don't want to see the tears. I, want, I don't want to see any drama that in here that um, we don't know what's going on and all that. Damn, Doctor Now's coming off cold blooded in this one. But I imagine he's seen this so many times, he just doesn't have that much compassion for people that are going to kind of sit here and say, Woe is me, while they're not following his program. This story that none of it is believable. So from here, it is simple. I want you to lose 35 pounds by next one and start seeing psychotherapy. If not, then we are not moving ahead with you. Damn, the mom fell asleep. Look at that. She's really checked out already. Just because we did not lose it, Margaret, does not mean we can't do it I want to again. go home. That's all I want. I just want out of this office and go home. Damn, she's, she's to me, it seems like she's kind of emotionally stunted. She still seems like a child to me. It's like she's going to throw a tantrum because she's not getting her way. I think this is probably what happens when you don't let your kid grow up. Try harder. You can do it. Like your mom said. Okay? We have faith that you can do this, Margaret. We're not quitting. And you quit, you're never going to make it. Okay? We're going to get on this horse, and we're going to do what Dr. Now said. No, we are not going to get on this horse, because we are not rated in the weight class to get on a horse. But I get what she's trying to say. Push yourself. We'll lose the pounds next time. Go and get them, sister. Hoorah, you know. But uh, you're the damn problem, lady. You bring the food. She eats what you bring her. So if your husband got to a 1,000 pounds, your daughter's kicking in at 750 What's the same going on here in this dynamic? Your husband's bed bound, your daughter's bed bound. What's the same in this equation? I can't figure it out. Maybe you could tell me. What is uh, Margaret's by herself during the day? Yes. Okay. Um, how do you do when you're by yourself, Margaret? I talk to her on the phone while she's at work. So you, you talk to each other all day on the phone? Yes, we may have a seven, eight hour <laughs> phone. Oh my God, that's not healthy. Your child should not want to talk to you all that damn time. 
she's just she's just a kid, man. She's a 35-year-old kid at this point. Kind of like the Sean guy that we saw before. Not this Sean. I'm a grown-ass man, damn it. But the this Margaret here, she's a kid. It sounds like you were a very active mother. Yes. And my she, babies are my world. Right. She's not a baby. She's my baby. She's your baby. Except when you abandon them to go help your thousand-pound husband. And she's 35. She's still my baby. She'll okay. always be my baby. You know, the word baby implies a lot of care. She's she's my baby. She's the youngest. I'm I'm a little worried. So yeah, I, I you know I don't know you very well, Marty. We just we just started talking, but I think that's going to be my theme with you is is making you not a baby. I think this is probably the worst thing you can do for her. Honestly, is baby her and treat her like this because she's figured out that she'll get her way she, even when her mom's gone. She talks to her for seven hours on the phone. Are you kidding me? Like, what about that seems healthy to you, lady? Do you, like the husband's gone? Do you not realize what you're doing to your own kid at this point? You must believe that the world is a dangerous place. It is, and that and I'm scared we don't to let, trust nobody. And that and I don't that, let nobody in. And that people will hurt you, right? They'll hurt me. That's but the when thing. When you have a trust issue, I, I have, have to trust say because mm -hmm. I'm there too. That's why I become her comfort zone, her security blanket. Yep. And I know you've been doing it forever, but I'm going to push you guys to be a little bit more independent. Right. The world's a scary place, but that doesn't mean everyone's out there to get you. Yes, there will always be people that are not the best people to let into your life. But mom, she's going to have to let go at some point and let this girl grow up. Because what happens when you're gone? She's just, what, a thousand pound person stuck in her bed who has no one to talk to at that point, who's completely isolated herself from the rest of the world? And, and how do you do that? You practice. I want you guys to practice more and more times of independence for her. And you get to step back and you get to attend to your job and your relationships and you're always going to be there for her. Correct. But you're going to be there for her in a way that's healthy and appropriate for a 35-year-old woman. So more or less you're Oh my God, the king of the mountains going down south. King in the north is going south, baby, to fight the night king. Oh my God. What is it? What do you think he found down there? Saying that I don't need her. No, no. Margaret, he's not saying that you don't he's need saying, her. He's saying, more saying not... that my comfort zone is gone. Margaret, you will all... I need to let go of my comfort zone. He's not saying you need to let go of me. Let's take the food. What part of you read that as, I need to be totally alone and let go of my comfort zone? You said you eat for comfort. Yes, you're going to have to let that go. But he's not saying you can't have a mom. He's saying your mom has to be less of a mom. Food from her, so that's a comfort zone gold. Okay, now let's shake the mother away from her. That's another comfort zone gold. Maybe we'll just keep breaking Margaret. her and breaking her and breaking her. Margaret, your mother can be very present. I'm done. 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 Give me a tank. I'm always going to love you. Give me a tank. Millie, Millie do, you, do you notice in this moment that you're jumping in? Because I know how stressful she is, and it is a meltdown, and she will want to resort to food. Shut up. Just shut up, shut up, shut up. I hear you talking all the time. I hear your daughter screaming about how she can't handle this, yada, yada, yada. But you're the problem, Mom. You are probably the biggest hindrance this girl has going on in her life. You helped out at first, and then it seems like you almost felt like you were going to lose your daughter. So I'd be willing to bet part of you might have even sabotaged this whole diet. Because you are hanging on to that baby, your youngest, she's my baby, for dear life, and it's not healthy. And here's an opportunity, even in this little tiny moment, we're going to let her have her feelings, because I think she's capable of working through this. You don't know me! <sighs> see, see the resistance? Just get out of my house. Just go, Joe. Just go. Get out of my house. I'm done. He's not. Oh, look at the coochie wah wah. He really tucked right in there, huh? Just rolled up into a little ball. Oh, she's going to get up. This dog better be careful. He might go where the sun don't shine. Hey, Margaret, I have I'm to done. abandon I'm you. Done. I'm done. It's interesting. She's, she's getting up in response to this. Isn't it, isn't it neat that she's getting out of bed in response to this? But I, I... 
Dr. Paradise is like, we're going to piss off the pounds away, buddy. We're going to get her angry. She's going to exercise. <laughs> she won't eat. She'll exercise it off. Just pissed off pound loss. I want you to notice the urge right now that you have to jump in and comfort her. And That's I, my job. I think of her as a, a grown-up adult, and we've got to let her self-soothe to work on this on her own in order for her to realize that. The solution is to... Um, Oh my God, what is the king of the mountain licking now? What did he find in that little cavern? Get him a little bit of crease grease, huh? This dog's going down there for coochie coal. To watch Margaret, do you want your walker? Take care of herself. Margaret, please do not try to walk without nothing. She's trying to get away from y'all. Okay. But, but I, I... This dog's still just licking away back here and she's storming off like nobody's business. Again, I want you to watch. She's doing this without anybody's help. I want her to go in and, and feel her feelings and be okay. She's a grown-up. She's going to go deal with her feelings. She's going to come out in a couple hours. I'm sure you guys will have a, a fine time after that. And I think this is really good. This is the push and pull, right? You may see that. As you might want to push and pull yourself a little bit back here, Paradise, because if she gets a little close to you, I think she's going to bounce your head off the ground. But you better not get within the danger zone. It's really negative. I'm proud of her. She basically I, I'm said, proud of her in a way, but I've seen the setback. I don't think this is a setback at all. I think there's a breakthrough. She just stuck up for herself. Somebody pushed her, and she got space from it. Damn, that's an angry face if I've ever seen it. And this king of the mountain, he's still back there licking on the bed. He's like, ooh, Christmas came early, baby. He's going to town on whatever's on that damn sheet. And my last appointment, I was 626. And I was supposed to lose 35 pounds in a month. So if I did that, the number I need to see is 591. I'm on it. The zebra cheetah pattern's a new one for me, but I kind of like it. Margaret's getting a little more in touch with her wild side. Okay. Oh, hey, Adolf. 31 pounds ain't all that bad. Maybe Dr. Paradise did piss her off into losing the pounds. Mama, get that wheelchair. Oh my. Oh my goodness. I did it. I did it. We're gonna go to room five, okay? That's pretty close. I really hope it is. Is it awkward that part of me feels proud when I see people do well on this? Because, like, I'm genuinely rooting for them. Everyone thinks that I'm just some kind of Scrooge. I don't want people to win. No, you guys just want to see people fail because it makes for funnier comments. But I want them to win. So what are you doing different with your eating habit? I'm not eating. <laughs> you what? I'm not eating. <laughs> Am I oh, damn. I don't think Dr. Now is going to buy that. Not if it was at the discount store, not if it was on the clearance rack for one cent. I don't think he believes you're not eating, lady. I'll be three or four o'clock in the afternoon before I finally do eat. And it's a salad. And it's a salad. With no dressing. With no dressing. <laughs> well, you lost 31 pounds, so this is... Uh, in 14 days. This is not a whole... Oh, my God. Oh, 14 days? That's not that bad. But I've seen Doctor... I think I've seen enough of this show at this point... I can figure out what Dr. Now is going to say. And uh, he's going to say, not good enough, lady. You're still too damn big. A lot of weight loss when you're 600 pounds. So what do you mean? You maybe think you're not eating, but you're still eating. Uh, I'm, like I said, I'm just, uh, it's 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon before I eat, and it's salad with just a handful <sighs> of, of protein. It's mostly salad. Uh, it's mostly lettuce and tomatoes, and it's not even an ounce and a half of um, uh, baked chicken. So, what do you call a handful of protein? That's what I, uh, I weigh it out. It's about a, it's about an ounce of, because I weigh it up, it's an ounce of baked chicken. Well, that don't sound that bad, but I'd have to see this damn salad, because if there's two cups of dressing on it, like she said before, that's definitely going overboard. I typically tend to think now... Dressing or sauces just aren't worth it. They're empty calories to me. I eat everything bland as hell just so I can keep on my diet path. And I'm somewhere around like 270 right now last time I weighed myself. So I've lost 335 pounds at this point. Okay. 
And what are you drinking? Water. Okay. All I right. will not go from anything but water. All right, if all that is accurate, you would have lost two to three times what you did. So you're... She's, you seen the way she stormed off before? She's kind of like the female version of, like, Bobby Boucher, the water boy. She just gets pissed off and stops off. Still eating more than you realize, but you're making some progress, but let's uh, tighten up a little bit more, okay? You taking a vitamin? Yes. Okay. I used to be all about carbs. All about carbs. I don't care about carbs no more. Me too, sister. I'm still all about carbs. I wish every day that I could have me some kind of muffin. I've been fantasizing about a piece of like cheesecake for quite a while now because that graham cracker crust does something to me. It just puts me in a funny place. I, I don't want to really talk about what it does to me. But carbs, still my fantasy, man. Uh, 10 out of 10 for carbs. I just can't eat them now, which sucks. But eventually, I'll lose enough weight I can have them again. Good. I don't want them. I, I, I've learned that the carbs and sugars is what makes you gain the weight. I don't want that no more. We drop the carbs, the fat, and the sugar. I don't need that in my life no more. Damn right. Carbs are the enemy of all fat kind. Once you guys figure that out, you cut them out of your diet, you'll see weight fall off quicker than you ever realize. At least we're on the right track now. We just need to keep pushing and go harder. And the most important thing is that you both started psychotherapy. So I'm proud of both of you for that. Okay, thank, thank you. you. So with all your progress, Margaret, I'm willing to schedule you for endoscopy in one month. You still got the long way to go. Stay focused and don't give up. And if you lose another 30 pounds and keep doing psychotherapy and PT, and if everything looks good in your endoscopy and test, then I will schedule you for weight loss surgery at that time. I actually thought he was going to approve her. I know he wanted her to lose more, but I still thought he was going to say, keep this up, I'll approve you in a certain amount of time. Point. Yes, sir. Okay. So have a positive attitude and work hard, and you're going to get there. Okay? All righty. Thank you, Dr. Nell. All right. That's the first time I've really seen her get excited about him saying work harder. I just thought she was going to think it was going to be handed to her at this point. But at 7.50, I could see why Dr. Nell wants her a little lower so the surgery's less dangerous. Hey, Margaret. Are you awake? All right. Um, your endoscopy look good. Oh, that's good. Okay. So everything looked good, except you got some gallstone. That looks to be the issue behind your stomach pain. And Gallstones, I think that's pretty common. They mentioned maybe taking my gallbladder, and then I just never heard anything else about it. I don't really have stomach pain, so I don't think I really have that. It, he said there was lesions on mine, I think. Probably that threw you some nausea and abdominal pain. Uh, just take it easy in what you're eating to help minimize any discomfort, and we will address that for you when we do your weight loss surgery. The other issue is that the infection in your leg has come back because of poor hygiene. So we need to keep you here to address that, but it shouldn't take too long. And uh, keep up with... Nobody's keeping this lady clean. Obviously, hygiene, she can't reach her leg. Somebody has to scrub that for her. It's not going to end well if nobody scrubs that. She could die from a damn infection before she gets to weight loss. Good work. And since you lost uh, some weight, mm -hmm. um, we're going to go ahead and put you in the schedule for weight loss surgery. I told you teamwork. Come on, give me teamwork. We've been waiting to hear them words, ain't we? Pretty good words right there, ain't it? I'm, so, I'm like, I'm happy for her. I just, I wish the, I, 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 uh, I want the mom to be a little less of a mom to a 35 year old. That's the only critique I really have at this point. Like, of course, this is a good moment. Embrace each other, be happy. But I want her to be able to grow up, live her own life. She's kind of being held back from doing that this whole time. Pretty good word. We got it, mom. We got it. <laughs> That's what we saw. We got our surgery. We got it. And we're making it over there. But, you but, ready for the rod? I'm ready. But, but here's the situation. It's going to take about a month to make sure there are no issues with your infection and to be safe before we move ahead with the operation. 
So I'm going to keep you here until next month to do that. And during that time, I want you to work with physical therapy to build up. Damn, doctor, I don't trust her one bit. He is not letting her go home. She can't go home, go on the Rolo Rodeo, do any of that. He is going to keep her locked up under, like, lock and key. She can't go home. She can't screw it up. A lot of people screw it up. I screwed it up. I went home and started eating again, even when I was approved. Your stamina, get yourself ready for surgery. And you did very good with the anesthesia today, so you can do well with that, too. It's been about a month since my surgery, and I'm still recovering. Though I'm feeling stronger, and I'm starting to get better. And I Really? I was out in about two days after my surgery. Like, it hurts. Don't get me wrong. Don't feel good. But a month later, she should be A-OK -okay at this point. I'm feeling really good because my food craving's almost all the way gone. It's still hard for me to believe that I made it as far as I did. And a year ago, I didn't know if my life was worth fighting for. But now I'm here, and I'm not only living, I'm making plans for the future. One thing. You see that crazy change of perspective right there? I think that's like the most deciding factor on who's successful on these shows. If they can change their perspective and just start seeing things in a different light, then they'll, I mean, the whole worldview changes. Everything looks sunnier outside. It's no more doom and gloom. A little, sometimes a perspective change is like the only thing you need to make it all work for you. Hey, Margaret. You can tell you had the stomach done. Yeah. It's all yours now. You own it. Now you just got to rock it. Dr. Now says I need to keep going to therapy and how that's really important if I want to be a success story. So I had one other session with Dr. Paradise. This lady's been like at least half naked for the entirety of the show. I've seen more sides of Margaret than I ever wanted to see. And it went a little better than the first one. This time, he was real careful to reassure me that he wasn't trying to take my mom away from me. And I started to trust him a little more. I Do you see how she's kind of a child? She sees that as people taking her mother away from her instead of her maturing into the woman she should be. That's how a kid would look at it. She's stunted in her maturity level. I know that my mama ain't gonna be here forever. Then one day I'll be here and she'll be gone so I can live my own life. And it doesn't feel good to say that. But Dr. Paradise says, I need to fake it till I make it. So here goes nothing. Hello, world, I'm Mar Fake it till you make it's kind of a good one, but I think she could make it. It's gonna be the deciding factor if she can keep this like fresh perspective or if she kind of goes back to thinking like she used to. Margaret. It took a lot. You wouldn't believe the stuff that I've overcome to be here today. But now I'm an independent woman. And Mama told me everything I need to know. So when she's up and gone, and I'm here all by myself, I'm going to do... Damn, King of the Mountain's always kind of hanging out down around that uh, nether regions down there, isn't he? Look at the ear po poking out in the corner of the screen. That dog's always prepared to lick more sheep. you just find on my own. And that's going to be the best gift I could ever give her. To live my life for me. You know what, Mama? I'm going to thrive. Isn't it kind of crazy how even after all this, she still sees this as doing this for her mother instead of doing this for her? That's how a kid would think about it. Uh, that whole outlook on life is just kind of crazy to me. But good job, Margaret. I'm happy for her. Hopefully she's kept going. I'll check and see where she's at now if I can find any kind of update online. But good on her. Hopefully the mom's kind of step back a little bit and let her mature into kind of her own woman. Because this is not a healthy dynamic. And uh, it's just kind of scary if that kind of keeps going. Because you're not going to be there forever. Sadly, at some point, you guys part ways and she'll have to be her own functioning adult. But let me know what you guys think about this one. Kind of interesting. Kind of sad. Definitely a long trip, but she did pretty good in the long run. So uh, let, leave me your thoughts in the comments. I'm always interested to read them, but I'll see y'all later. Peace.